Hey guys, this is Gary. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Um, I want to remind you guys about the, uh, I'm going to do a video here, but I want to remind you guys first to subscribe. And I want to remind you about the impactfoundationla.org. Um, please donate. We're trying to get some money together uh, so we can bring on um, doctors and um, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, counselors that can help other people. Um, this foundation was set up um, by a woman named Vicki and she lost her son about, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but I think about a year and a half ago to um, an accidental fentanyl overdose. Uh, he had no idea he was taking the drug fentanyl. It was uh, hidden in a drug, uh, another recreational drug, and he lost his life because of that. And my son, Brandon, uh, just lost his life um, about uh, a month and one week ago, maybe a month and two weeks ago now, um, to uh, a fentanyl overdose. Toxicology reports aren't back yet, but uh, the coroner said, you can bet uh, it was fentanyl. We don't know if it was, uh, you know, if he was uh, taking another drug or if it was just straight he was just doing straight fentanyl we're not sure but uh, please subscribe please go to impactfoundationla.org and there's a little donate button on there where you could donate a dollar five dollars a hundred dollars um, it would be you would be doing great things with your money so, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, my sobriety and how it's going. Uh, I was at a meeting last night. Uh, I go to a 5.30 meeting at uh, a little, it's a little house on Bolden Avenue, Bolden Avenue, and they call it Bolden. So, I was in the meeting, and I'm not going to share, you know, I, I you know, I can't share, really share what other people share in that meeting. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, and I, and I won't do that. You know, it's breaking the tradition and some privacy of people's shares. But um, somebody had said that, that, that it was Stevie Ray Vaughan's home group. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's true or not. But, you know, it's, it's downtown Austin, Texas. It makes sense. So that would be cool. So, um yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's kind of neat. Um, you know, this this disease that that I have, um, it, it 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 it's in it's it just runs rampant through society. You know, it it hits the rich, the poor. Um, you know, male, female. Um, it, you know, it, it, it just takes prisoners and ruins lives. Um, I found a way out. So, and the way I did it was, I, I, you know, it was through prayer. I thought God forgot about me and I was out using drugs and alcohol and I'm praying, God, please, please make me willing. Just make me willing to be willing to try. Right. Because I would, I would get loaded and go about my day and go to bed loaded and, and wake up and have to do it again. I, 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 I It's like I, did, I lost the power of choice in the matter. I, I, I didn't have a choice. You know, uh, physically I would get sick and um, uh, shake and uh, be sick to my stomach and feel horrific. And I would have to put uh, a drug in my body just to feel good, just to get normal, just to feel right again. And uh, if you guys are anything like that, or, or if you're just, 
Your drinking is, you know, spiral, spiraling out of control. You know, this is the only disease where you have to, um, where they say you have to diagnose yourself. You know, and this, it, it sounds funny, but it's true. Because doctors, I had a doctor one time. Um, I was, I was about 18 or maybe 19 years old. And I had went on a trip to Mexico with my buddies and I was just on a hard run. I mean, it's just the way I lived my life. You know, I was out of high school and I was a fuck up and I was living at home. And my parents were pretty well off at that time and they were busy in their lives. And, and I was pretty, probably pretty spoiled. And, um, you know, if I wanted to go somewhere, I'd say, hey, mom, I'm going somewhere. Can you give me some money or whatever? Um, and she'd give me money or I'd steal it out of her purse or something. Um, but I remember I came back from a trip from Mexico and, I, and when I was in Mexico, I was with my buddy, Bill, and I was so sick that whole trip. I never, uh, we were there for like 24 hours or something like that. We went into Tijuana from the San, San Diego border and I was so sick. I never left the front seat of that car or the back seat of that car. You know, Bill was out partying and, um, I think there were some other friends down there too, but I remember being so sick and, um, I was doing a lot of cocaine, um, and just drinking like a fish. And I, when I got back home, my mother had actually thrown me out of the house and they, uh, that's right. My mom was on, my mom and dad were on a long trip. And my brother, my younger brother was like staying at the house and I had gotten in a fight with my mom. I, I don't remember. I called her some, I was really disrespectful. I called her some names or something like that. And she said, get out of my fucking house. You're not allowed in this house anymore. So, um, I remember coming back from that trip and I was so sick and I remember not being allowed in the house and my brother let me in the house because I was so sick, I could not hold down any food. Um, the only time I could hold down, hey Bob, the only time I could hold down food is when I smoked some pot that would settle my stomach. And I know that's, they give it to cancer patients and stuff like that too, um, you know, so they can eat. Um, but I remember the only time I could eat and hold down any food was um, if I smoked marijuana. And, um, I was so sick when she got home from her trip and I was on her couch. I, like my brother, I heard him meet her at the door and said, Hey, Gary's on the couch. You know, she's like, what do you mean? He's supposed to be out of the house. No, Gary's really sick. Yeah. You know, and you know, he probably needs to go to the hospital or, or a doctor or something. So I remember her taking me to the doctor the next day and I could, you know, barely get in the car. I had to smoke pot just so I didn't throw up. And the doctor uh, examines me. And this doctor was also an alcoholic. You know, he was an alcoholic in recovery. And I remember he sat me and her down and he said, uh, Mrs. Brown, um, your son is uh, actually dying from alcoholism and drug addiction right now. He has an infected pancreas and that's what's making him sick. Um, he needs treatment. And, um, I had just gotten out of treatment. Maybe I, it, it was so long ago. I'm not sure, but this was a doctor that would go into the treatment center that I, I went to new beginnings in century city, California. And this was a doctor that worked and he would, he, you know, he would check the patients when they checked in and, you know, he, he was in charge of, you know, them physically and um you know then there was counselors and stuff that did group and stuff with us um man did I meet some cool people in that rehab I was, I'm just remembering this you know um Bob stop man Bo leave the cat alone I'm sorry you guys <laughs> this is so fucking bad man I'm gonna fucking kill my animals here um so I, this this was the coolest rehab man it was the coolest experience. Um, it was just a special group of people. I remember all the people I was in rehab with. I mean, I mean, 
you know, I was in re rehab with, with, um, uh, well, I could say her name now. I mean, everybody knows was Carrie Fisher, which is Princess Leah. Um, my son would say, dad, you're flexing right now. So, <laughs> all right, I'm flexing. Okay. I was in a, uh, also with a guy, um, he's passed away now. His, uh, let's just say he was a gangster and they made a movie about him. Uh, I don't, you know, he treated me very well, but, um, they made a movie, uh, called Wonderland about him. And it was about, you know, he had some people murdered, um, supposedly, you know, he was never, he was never, uh, convicted of that. And then there was a Raiders cheerleader and, um, a Rams cheerleader, uh, and another, uh, lady, I'm not going to say her name because she's alive and, um, uh, just for her anonymity, uh, but just. It was a really cool experience for me because I was like 18 years old. And um, that was my introduction to Alcoholics Anonymous. And here I am, you know, at 56 years old. I got s sober again at 55 years old. Um, you know, but, you know, it's not, I, I just didn't have some fucked up life where I was just fucked up all the time. I mean, in that, you know, from, from then to now, um, from 18 to 56 that I am now, I had, um, seven years at one point and I started a family. I had seven years of sobriety. I, I got into AA and went to a rehab and, um, got engaged and got married and had three kids. Well, I did all that sober, lived a great life. And, um, things got hard between my wife and I, and, I, um, I didn't know how to, you know, I wasn't working a program at that point, like seven years in or whatever. And there came a time where I got weak and I relapsed. And, and then it was just a fucking chaotic nightmare. You know, I had a business that was doing millions of dollars worth of revenue. And um, I completely fucking destroyed that business. Uh, then I went out for four years. And uh, I was out doing damage for four years. Just almost killed myself again. And um got back into AA in 2000, excuse me, in 2002. And, and from 2002 to th say 2011, something like that, I was involved in AA. I went to meetings every day and uh, I had a home group. I would suggest a home group for anybody. Like right now, my home group is bold in 5.30 p.m. every day. No, I don't go every day, but that's my, my home group. And then um, I go a few times a week. And then uh, my home group in, was the Laguna Beach Canyon Club, 7 a.m. morning meeting. And that's a meeting of about 120 people every morning. So there's a lot of sobriety, a lot of good sobriety, and a lot of craziness, too. A lot of cra craziness, 120 fucking alcoholics not drinking. <laughs> but um, the capacity for love in that room was, was amazing because uh, I lost... Um, a woman that I was deeply in love with. Uh, I had met her in those rooms. And uh, one night we went to dinner and, and she went down from an allergy to the food she ate. It was She was allergic to pine nuts. We didn't know what was setting off her allergy all the time. And, and she actually died in my arms. Um, we put her on life support, but we had to unplug the machine after three days. And in the hospital, when I was in the hospital, over, I, I think, I remember the, the nurse saying over three or 400 people came uh, the last day to, you know, in support of me and her. Um, and they were all from Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, 95% of them. So, and they were all from those, you know, from Newport Beach and Laguna Beach. So that's the kind of support you get in, in AA when you're tied into a big home group like that. Um, and then, so I, I stayed sober through through that meeting and through, you know, uh, when I lived in, in, in Newport Beach there for almost 10 years. Then I went and um, I, I, I went through a depression. They gave me some, some medication. 
and, and I got some narcotics and my therapist said, take what they're, you know, they, they're prescribing you, you know? And, um, I took it and I, I, I wasn't spiritually fit for whatever reason, you know, I've got that like a lot of people call it an allergy to alcohol or drugs, or I just have that addiction, you know, the affliction addiction. Um, I can't just take one, you know, put a piece of chocolate cake in front of me too. I can't just have one of those either. You know, anything that feels good, man, anything that gets my endorphins kicking, you know, uh, it comes in many forms, you know. I said earlier, it comes in uh, many forms. It could come in the form of a chocolate cake. It could come in the form of a good bowl of pasta, man. Yeah. It could come in the form of a, a slot machine, a deck of cards, you know, you know, poker chips, um, a baggie, a bindle, a vial, bottle, needle. I've done it all, you know. A female, you know, I've, I've had my share of addiction, addicted relationships, you know, and, uh, where you're just addicted to, you can't stop, um, you know, you're with, you know, you're in there with the wrong person and it's just, uh, you know, it, you know, it's, it's a whole addiction in itself, you know, sex, you know, all that stuff is, you know, I've just battled this thing my whole life and the only thing that seems to work is the 12 steps you know I can use those 12 steps on anything I identify as an alcoholic and a drug addict but I'm an addict I'm just an everything addict you know cigarettes right um, you name it yeah. so I'm trying to fill this hole you know, um, and if only an alcoholic will know what I'm talking about, right? So I've got like this hole I need to fill. I never felt right as a kid. I always felt different. And as soon as I put drugs or alcohol in, I remember I drinking for the first time and it made me feel good. And, um, I didn't, I was like 10 years old and I did some crazy shit that night and I just had like two Mickey's big mouths, right? And, um, the next time I drank that I remember was, I was 14 and I remember drinking, we drink, I, I drink Miller High Life. I can't drink that beer today. You know, well, I can't drink anything. I don't want to drink anything today, but I couldn't drink that because I threw it up so much out of my nose and everything else. I, I think, uh, I was around 14 years old. It was, I think it was Halloween. And I just remember we had our pillowcases and, and my pillowcase, whatever your pillowcase would hold. And I think I got 14 in there and I drank my 14 and then some. And I was so sick. And I remember my mom coming into my room going, oh my God, it reeks in here. And you're going to school. And I'm like, I can't go to school, mom. I'm so sick. And I had to stay home for a couple of days, man. I was I had like alcohol poisoning. She goes, it, it reeks. It's coming out of your pores. And I just remember when I took that, not the first drink, but when I got that first buzz, I don't know how long it took to get my buzz on. Probably, you know, I was 14, maybe a beer or two. But I was like, I want more of this. And I remember thinking, why the fuck can't we always feel this good? You know? Why can't I feel this good naturally? It just calmed all that shit in my head. The other time I had that experience was I was about 15 years old. And I remember my sister, she was cranking Billy Idol and she had some friends over and Billy Idol was just came out back then, man. And he was like, he was different than everybody else. He was fucking sick, man. And, uh, she would, they were listening to white wedding. And I remember they had cocaine and she, I did my first line of cocaine with my sister and, oh, sorry about that, Debbie. <laughs> now they said your name too. <laughs> um, so I do do my first line of blow with my sister, that deviant little bitch. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm saying that because I know she's watching this uh, or she's going to be. But so we're just young kids, you know, and, and we do. Um, we did some blow and I did a line of coke. Maybe it was two. 
but I got that feeling again, like, fuck, man, why can't I always feel like this? Why didn't, I, and I remember, I, I'll never forget thinking, why can't God make us, why didn't he make us so we can always feel this good, right? And normal people don't think that way, man, you know? And I chased that high for years, you know? Any extra money I got, or in, put any money I got, right, at that age, from that time on, went to cocaine. Until I was, you know, found my way uh, on my mom's couch in, in my first stint in rehab. I did so much cocaine and alcohol. I remember that doctor telling my mom, your son is dying from alcoholism and drug addiction. The only thing he puts on his body is cocaine and booze. And he's dying from that. He has an infected pancreas. That was at 18 years old. <laughs> That's how hard I drink. That's how hard I do drugs. So AA saved my life. You know? And it's not to say AA doesn't work because I don't have long-term sobriety. It's I didn't work AA. And, you know, relapse doesn't have to be part of your story, but it is part of some of our stories. And, you know... I don't know why I wasn't spiritually fit that day. Maybe I just have such an incredible allergy to, 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 to that drug that I put in that day that, um, you know, I know a lot of other people that I could go, those motherfuckers are really unspiritually fit, but they're sober walking around in AA. So, you know, and, and, um, and I'm not judging people. I'm just saying, I don't know why I wasn't. I just have to go. You know, because I was working a program and it was, that was a hard relapse for me because I was like, fuck, man. Like, fuck, I'm not, you know, I'm not sober anymore. Like your worst nightmare. And then I'm, I'm never going back to AA. I was too humiliated. So maybe I'll get a haircut today because this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> so anyways, I shaved. So, um... It's Sunday morning here in Austin, Texas. It's uh, 7 a.m. I've been up for like an hour and a half, you know, drove around with my dog, drank my coffee for a little bit, my Starbucks, and he did his little sniffing out the window. Remember, guys, the five-day God challenge? If you don't believe in God or you think uh, God's abandoned you or um, like I did, just get on your knees and... Um, or if you don't believe in God, believe that I believe and that he's working in my life. I don't know how it all works, but it's working. Get on your knees in the morning and ask God, God, please help keep me sober today. Uh, God, uh, please help me get to a meeting today of AA or NA. And uh, if you go to sleep sober, and you know, also ask him to reveal himself to you in five days. And watch for those little miracles, you guys, watch. They're, they'll happen. And when you go to sleep at night and you had a better day than you did the day before, say thank you. And don't beat the shit out of yourself if you drink. You know, if this isn't, this isn't uh, beat the shit out of ourselves. You know, this isn't about that. This is about treating ourselves kind. I was listening to Jordan Peterson last night and he was talking about, you know, treat yourself like you, you, like you are your best friend. You know, you would never beat your best friend up. You know, or your fa your loved family member. Why do you do it to yourself? You know, I find myself doing it too. I'm not saying I don't do that, but I'm saying now that I'm in recovery, I, when I recognize that I'm doing that, I immediately stop, and I immediately jump into solution. I don't like to feel beat up. So, please subscribe and remember, okay, the Impact Foundation, LA.org. Please, you guys, we need money. We need to start getting this thing going. There's so many people out there that need our help, but we have very little money right now in the foundation to, to bring people on board. Okay, a lot of people and, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that are going to donate their time, but we still need professionals to help these people. We still need doctors to write prescriptions. We still need um, professionals. Okay, we still need airlines to fly people around. We still need 
um, Ubers to Uber people to and from places. We can't do it without your help. Please, please, you would be doing a good service with your money. Um, ImpactFoundationLA.org. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.